Now we're recording. Good. Let's share the screen. Okay, so today's subject is actually the first commandment. I'm the Lord your God. And the reason why we did that is that we've moved from 10 down to 4. But the last three, I'm the Lord your God, do not have any other gods and um, do not take the Lord's name in vain, really doesn't make sense to go backwards. So we're going forward. So let's try this. Okay. Oops. We've lost you. Lost you. Where are you? He's gone. Yep. He'll be back. Sound and picture. <laughs> Call him Joe, but him, him, it is five degrees here tonight. Can you believe it? Uh, hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay, sorry guys, I'm back. Um, let's try share that screen again. Um, share the screen. Okay. Um, so where, did you hear the beginning, the introduction? No. No, not really. Okay, must I start again? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're over here. Even though uh, the vast majority of Westerners believe in God, many believers struggle with their belief. Many are not com comfortable with their belief and are an easy about God. People have many questions. Where was God during the Holocaust? Why is there so much bad in God's world. If we have scientific solutions to our problems, do we still need God? Where is God? Does God interact with us on a daily basis? So, this is an excerpt from the Yigdal prayer, um, which was actually based on the 13 principles of faith by Maimonides. Yigdal Elohim Chai V'yishtabach, may the living God be exalted and praised. He exists without being confined to time. He is one, and there's no unity like his unity. He is hidden with no quantification to his unity. He has no bodily resemblance and has no body. His holiness is without description. Is he preceded everything created. He was first with no beginning to his beginning. Um, source number two is from the way of God, Derech Hashem. Our assumptions are six. The truth of God's existence, that he is perfect, absolutely exists, independently <coughs> exists, is visible and one. So, conversation. Can you describe the God you believe in or do not believe in? Number two, why is why is the God conversation generally not an easy one to have? And number three, many people speak about having a personal relationship with God. Do you believe in this? What does it look like? Would anyone like I to comment? I believe in it. Okay, good. Uh, 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 for me, it's a personal experience with God when, I, uh, when I'm thinking about something or I'm asking a question about life in, in general, and I pick up a safer and I open it at random, and then boom, the, the, the topic on the page is directly related to the thing I've been thinking about. Okay, that's good. The God plays a very personal role in your life. One kind of, yeah, that's, that's one application. Okay, good, excellent. Anyone else? 
sometimes when there's a major major tragedy one actually has to ask oneself is there a god how can a god allow something like the holocaust to happen um and you start wondering in yourself if there is and is god a what is god is god a spirit is god an illusion is god what is it? who is god i mean I, I sometimes very you know think there is a god there is somebody watching over us and knowing everything about us there's no there's no secret from god but what or who is god is it just a spiritual thing between you and god or between everybody and the same god I don't know. Um, okay. Anyone else? Why, wait, do you think speaking about God to other people is, is, can be quite difficult? Why? Because you're somebody you don't see. You can't see him. Right. He's in your mind. He's in your mind. So you, you're saying it's, a, it's such a personal... Yes, um, I think so. It's such a personal idea, in a way, you know, the way that people conceive of God, that it Experience. is hard to express. Okay. Every everyone um, has a personal experience. Yes. I think also um, people uh, people have different ideas about how God operates. And they so, are probably very different. But we have different yeah. ideas about other things operate too. And I'm not sure why that should make it a difficult conversation. I think it, it, depends, it depends who you're speaking to. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. You're speaking to, if, you're speaking, if you're speaking to someone who, I mean, like if I spoke to like you about God, it would be very easy. But if when you speak to someone that, like, like, not a non-believer, but someone that's not like in touch. You know, it 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 becomes harder. It's like, how do you explain it? Yeah. Is God with you all the time, or does God appear at Sorry? certain times? Is God with you all the time? Is is yes, he is of course. Sure. Hello? Yeah. He is, he is with us, yeah, all the time. All the time. With everybody. He, he loves all of us. No, I know, but is he with you all? Yes. With yes. I don't know if he could be with us 100% all the time because there's so many different needs of different people. I think that, like, I mean, he's with us all the time, but he's obviously servicing those that need him more at a specific time. Well, do, do you think that he's limited? Not limited, uh, but I mean, like... Sometimes he's more revealed in our lives than others. Maybe. Yeah. I think you know, now I mean, with COVID, right? Where, where's God? Where's God with COVID? This is a major world uh, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. You know, is God? He certainly hasn't. He's gone you, for life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or or he, maybe he gave us everything we need in order to deal with it as best as we can, and is watching us to see what's happening. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's here's the COVID prayer. God, please send a cure to this so we can go back to ignoring you. You're right. There you go. Um, Maybe okay. we've got COVID because he wants us to start appreciating what's, what's really important in life. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Okay. Introduction. Um Pshat, the literal understanding. The deber is unique in that it is not in command form. It's a statement. It doesn't say to do anything. 
It is because of this that some commentators do not count it as one of the 613 mitzvot. Whether it is or isn't a mitzvah, is def it's definitely a deber. It's still part of the Seres Adibras, the Ten Commandments. So, the, what does it say? I'm the Lord your God who took you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. The Lord mitzvah in which we have been commanded to believe in God. One should believe that there is a first cause who brought, brings about all existence. This is the intent of the words, I am the Lord your God. So according to the Rambam, Maimonides, there really is a mitzvah here. Why it's not in mitzvah form to believe, you know, when God is saying, you know, believe in me, um, we need to answer that. But he's definitely counting it as one of the mitzvot. There was a great rabbi called Rav Chazda Karasis. He, he wrote a book called Or Hashem, The Light of God. And he says it's a mistake to count the belief in God amongst the 630 mitzvot because it is not feasible to have a commandment without a knowing commander. Meaning the problem is uh, who is commanding us to believe in God? God? Well, it's only if you believe in God that he can, com can command you. So if believing in God is a commandment, it perforce already assumes the existence of God. And in that case, there's no need for the commandment. So, you know, that's an interesting halachic question. Um, the question over here is, is belief in God a choice? You know, think about believers and non-believers. Do people make a choice to believe in God or it's just kind of something you, you have? It's a state of mind. It's a state of being that some people arrive at and some people do not arrive at. Some people have and lose. Some people didn't have and gain. You may remember that a more accurate translation of the Sarah to Debrot, the Ten Commandments, is the Ten Principles, or so core values. According to the opinion that it is not a commandment, but a statement, what message are we meant to take from it? Any comments? Remember who this is all coming from. Sorry? Remember who this is all coming from. Once more? Yeah, I said, uh, what are we supposed to take from this? So we're, it's basically like a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, uh, a, a prelude. Hey, remember where this is all coming from. I am the Lord your God. Uh, oh, uh, your, uh, uh, right. right. This isn't your school teacher telling you how to live. Um, right. So it's setting, it's setting, you're looking at it in terms of, I guess, number one, looking at in terms of the Ten Commandments. This is the introduction. You know, as some people say, it's like God's business card. You know, here's the introduction. I am the Lord your God. But it's, right, um, but it's also and then when you we, know, when then we, you have a context for the rest. Right, yeah. Uh, like, just consider, like, this is, this is when we first hear God at the, at the mountain speaking. So he introduces himself. Right, so like, right. it, like there's what we read yep. thousands of years later, but he's introducing himself um, when we're there at the mountain. Yeah. Okay. So, so, Good. so, Rabbi, then, then, do they uh -huh. say that uh, that that God orchestrates free will? Yes. Yes. That's very fundamental about Jewish, you know, thinking that we do have free will. That's very important. But does but does God orchestrate free will as well? What does that mean? Is it does does He have a hand in your free will and your decisions? Um, mm, I mean, I, I think to what you are to what your decision what the potential decisions are yes um and how you know what 
what you're capable of, yes. But in order to be called free will, it has to be yours. He leaves it to us. And I just read, I was just learning someone before that, you know, in the world. Go on. Yeah. Has he gone off? Yeah. Quiet, guys. Hello. <laughs> Where are you? But in this world, the, the more you will get in oh, the next baby. world. Um, Sorry, what was that? No, I'm saying uh, free will, God does work. God, God presents us with choices. Are you losing me? Yeah. Yes. We lost. Hello? Hello? Okay, you're back. Bring in and out here. Hello? Yeah, yeah we yeah. got you. Now what? Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, we got you, Rebel. <laughs> Are you gone? No, no, I'm back. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. You know. Hello. 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 Okay. So we're just saying that God, no, the, in all, the idea of free choice is that we really are free. Um, you know, obviously there are limitations to what we can choose between and where, you know, what we're able of impacting. You know, maybe the impact of our choice is not always that free, but the actual choice is free. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on over here because there's a lot here. Um, Can I just interject? I, how many times in the day do you say, Dear God, God help me? God, and you, you actually just automatically, as a matter of speech, say, Where are you, God? And I, I, mean, I think it. I often say, dear God, you know, as just as a matter of speech. Now, is that not something ingrained in me that I'm asking for some solace from from a higher? Yeah, being? that could be yes. You know, oh God knows. You know, right. Only God knows. Yeah, it's a recognition, and I think a very good one. You know, <clears throat> um, and we, I, I think that everybody says that. No, I think some very, actually very, very um, much dependent on, I think, how people grew up, but also on the belief that people have, how how strong their belief is, and also to what degree they really believe that God is going to answer them. You know, my, you know, I think you could be a very strong believer, but not really believe that your prayer is going to be that listened to, you know. It, maybe God's with you whether you pray or not, and it's a way of you reminding yourself that God is with you. Um, and God might not answer your prayer always the way that you want him to. Yeah, but that's because he acts like a parent. I mean, a parent doesn't always give you what you want. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you've got to, like, in a way, look at, like, God as, as I mean, he's, he's your, your... Avinu Malkinu, our father, our king, for sure. Exactly. And he knows what's best for us. Uh, just because you ask for it doesn't mean to say it, it's the right thing. Exactly. You know, and, and sometimes, you know, listen, not always, you know, do we, you know, not always do we give, explain God's behavior. Sometimes maybe God puts us in a situation that he wants our prayers, that we should reach out to him. And, and he, he really wants us to realize that things are dependent on him. Yeah, exactly. So, so we, we never quite know. That's, I think to me. That's one of the one of the harder parts about the God conversation 
is that we, we don't know that much. You know, it, maybe yes, maybe not. You know, did, did God punish us with corona or did we bring it upon ourselves? You know, and he just didn't stop it in a miraculous way. Um, is, it, is he going to cure us or is there enough in the natural world that we're going to find a cure and, you know, go through a long process of finding a vaccination, a vaccine and, you know, things like that. Um, so I think a lot of it depends on, on a person's view of the natural world vis-a-vis -vis God as well. But let, let's look at this. This is an interesting one here over here, this Yasod. Um, who has inflicted this upon us? Who has made us Jews different from all other people? Who has allowed us to suffer so terribly up till now? It is God that has made us who we are. But it will be God too who will raise up us up again if we bear all the suffering and if we are still Jews left when it's over, then the Jews, instead of being doomed, will be held up as an example. Who knows? It might even be our religion from which the world and all peoples learn good. And for that reason and that reason alone do we have to suffer now. We can never become just Netherland, uh, uh, Netherlanders or just English or representatives of any country for that matter we will always remain jews but we want to to mm -hmm. and that's from anne frank so the moral of prague text over here the moral of prague points out that the words your god in some way god is specifically your god and you're speaking to the jewish people this is the notion of being the chosen nation the roots of this idea also goes back to Abraham. Let's go back to Abraham in Genesis 17:17. 17, 17. It says, I will maintain my covenant between me and you. He's speaking to Abraham. And your offspring to come as an everlasting covenant throughout the ages. To be your God and to your offspring to come. Um, the covenant extended to the children of Israel. I will be ever present in your midst. I will be your God and you shall be my people. So that was when, um, that's God speaking now to the Jewish people a few hundred years later. And in Parshish Kedoshim it says, For I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall be holy, for I am holy. Um, and that's what it says in... Hello? Does that imply that there is only one God for the Jewish people? Or is that of course. No, but the, the God of the Jewish people, the God of the Jewish people is the God of the entire world, but he has a unique... He has a special relationship with the Jewish people. That's what it's saying. Say that again. I'm saying that the God of the Jews is the God of the, of the world. He just has a unique relationship with the Jewish people. Um... Okay, uh, Isaiah says over here, for, for he said, it, it, by the way, do you see my screen? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay, for he said, it, is it too little that you should be my servant in that I raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel? I will also make you a light unto the nations that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. So here we have a few, a few very interesting concepts. Look in the conversation here. How is covenantal relationship, a covenantal relationship different from other relationships? Because God has a covenant, a brit, a bris with us. How does this covenant inform our mission? 
Why is the concept of a chosen people problematic to some people? And is blessing or suffering part of the, being the chosen people? Is being chosen a virtue or responsibility? How does the covenantal relationship between God and the Jewish people manifest itself on a daily basis? Any comments? Hmm. What does it mean? Is it special to be Jewish? What is our mission as Jews vis-a-vis -vis God? It's an individual um, relationship. It depends on whose perspective. God, no matter what their religion is. Or is that going too far? Am I taking it too far? But I mean, you you have very religious people who aren't Jews. Okay. Probably well, what does it? The, of the world. The, the, the question is, what does it mean that we have a? What does it mean that we have a covenantal relationship, this bris, this special relationship with God? What actually does it mean? What is our role as Jews? That there is one God looking after the Jews. No. Right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it, we believe only in one God of the entire world. Yeah. So, so what? You know, what, what, what does he want with the Jews? He definitely has shown the Jews a, a, a few, you know, we, we have been privileged to receive the Torah. We have somehow existed throughout history, even though maybe, you know, uh, it's quite a unique uh, feat that we have existed. And maybe God has, uh, God has saved us and made sure that we still exist. Um, what else is part of the covenant? It seems like from Isaiah that part of the covenant is that in our role as Jewish people is to bring the knowledge of God and the Torah to some extent to the, to the rest of the world. Does God expect more from the Jews? Maybe God favors the Jews. Does he? I mean, I'm not sure through history that seems to be so uh, accurate. Um, uh, supposedly God favors the Jews. That's what it says in black and white in the Torah. Um, but, you know, I think, I think that's contributed to a fair degree uh, of... Uh, but I think it's been used to justify anti-Semitism. Um, I was thinking about it earlier today, though, that like anti-Semitism is kind of what, it, it's kind of the reason the state of Israel exists today. Had we been yep. able to assimilate, had we been able to assimilate, you know, it wouldn't be here. And, uh, and, and for that matter, like how, um, I, I was actually, okay, here's the, the off the wall thought that I had. What if Theodore Herzl was uh, uh, Mashiach Ben Yosef? You know, just thought, I don't know. I don't know um, enough about the concept of, of that Messiah to make any claim, but it was just kind of a thought. If there wasn't uh, uh, anti-Semitism in Europe, there wouldn't have been a push uh, for Zionism to start a state right. in, in, in the land of Israel. Um, yeah. It seems like there's, there's two ways we can have it, you know. Um, one way is through our upholding our end of the bargain, or um, the other way is um, dealing with the consequences of not upholding the bargain, um, and it seems like uh, we've we've had it the the uh, the easier hard way rather than the harder easy way through history. Um, that is um, that is uh, we um, we face persecutions, but as far as we've come, here we are. And uh, and who could ever see this happen except for even among the Jews, who could have seen this happen? You know, after 2,000 years, um, we are uh, almost, almost the majority of our global population is living in its ancestral homeland. Who, who saw that coming? I mean, I, in the 16th century, Martin Luther was quoted as, 
as uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but it had something to do with how, like, if the Jews ever would go back to their ancestral homeland, then um, then he would go with them. You know, basically making some kind of a sarcastic remark that, yeah, that's a, that's ever going to happen, right? But uh, right. here we are. So what does what does that mean? You know, even even in it's it's such a strange thing. I, I hope you don't mind that I'm going off. Um, it's, it's, Um, Rabbi, can you hear him? You're breaking up now, Marcus. Uh, I, I was hearing him, but now he's breaking up. Uh, Sorry, I, Marcus. I got about a tenth of everything that he said. Yeah. No, I think he was just saying, you know, like, we do see this remarkable thing about the Jewish people going back to the land of Israel in our days, you know, 1948 and the establishment of the state and the fact that nowadays, you know, almost a majority, if not a majority of Jews are living in Israel is, um, is pretty remarkable, you know. So, you know, does God, maybe, you know, God is, is, is leading history in, in the very big strokes. You know, we see we see that. You know, maybe you know we see just the, you know a little bit of what of, of the capability. Maybe if we would, as a Jewish people, if we would do what we we were meant to do, if we would galvanize around the same, you know, uh, mission and come to an understanding of the Torah, which we could bring all Jews into a unity about, um, maybe we would see amazing things. Could you um, hear me, yeah, Carol? Yeah. No, something like that. I, I think there is, you know, God is definitely with us. God definitely gives us a lot of space. Um, but, um, you know, my, personally, my faith is that if we would, and I guess on a personal level to some degree, but definitely on a communal level, if we could find some unity and agreement and, and, and find our, uh, um, you know, align ourselves with, with what God really wants us to do, we would see unbelievable blessings. Anyway, that's for today's class. We can continue next week. We'll continue with um, what's in the name and uh, continue this conversation, actually, and then get into a call for kindness. Um, Obviously, this week, uh, Thursday night, is already Shavuot. So we're not going to have a class on Thursday. Sorry. We're not going to have a class on Thursday. We're going to be um, having Shavuot. For those who are interested, um, I don't know if you downloaded these, um, these booklets. They're very good for Shavuot. Obviously, the time when the Torah was given. And I'm going to send you two Haggadot. We made a Shavuot Haggadah, which... Um, uh, I'm going to share with you, and you could you. Uh, print those and use those. Thank you. All right, guys. So have a good one.